Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah with a little tutorial on how to make and join the squares that I'm using for my temperature blanket. No, this is not the color of my temperature blanket. I decided to do colors that were easily contrasted and really easy to see when filming. So yeah, you got the pink mainstay back again. And this is the color that's, uh, oh gosh, I think it was a part of a latte stripes or something from, a, yeah. And this is, uh, hmm, might be a big twist. I don't remember, they're scraps, it's okay. Because what, what you need is, you will need a pair of scissors to cut things off, of course, this is yarn, that's what we do. You will need a yarn needle to weave stuff in, also part of what we do. You will need a crochet hook and you will need yarn. I have three different colors here. I'll do one for the middle, one for the outside, and a different color to join. I'm gonna use this color to join, so I'm gonna put it aside. And this time I'm gonna start with this in the middle because I want it to contrast when I show you how to connect them. Let's push that away. Now, like I said, this is what we're going to make just with the colors opposite. The way I'm doing my temperature blanket is the inside represents my low temperature, the outside represents my high temperature, and then I join them all in white on mine. This one, well, well we're gonna use that mustard color. All right, how do we start off? We're making a little square, so we're gonna start off in the round. We're gonna do my version of a magic ring, which is a not so magic ring. I make a slip knot, snug it up, and I chain four. One, two, tres, cuatro. Now you didn't know you were getting a little Spanish lesson at the same time, did you? Okay, then, I want to make, this actually acts as a double crochet. Mm -hmm. We want to make three more double crochets. We're going to yarn over, go into that first stitch and kind of pull it out a little bit. Let me show you. I'm just kind of doing this to demonstrate. In that first stitch, you have the single yarn part here on the outside, there. Then you have the double part, the rest of the stitch down here on the bottom. We want to make sure we leave our single part on the top. So going to go in and I, I'm standing up while doing this so my apologies pull up we're just doing double crochets here pull through and pull through if you are unfamiliar with doing double crochets single crochets or triple crochets which you will need um, I have other videos tutorials on how to do that okay we're gonna make one more so that we will have a cluster of three Wow, I forgot how splitty this particular yarn was. Good gravy. Okay. There we have three. We're gonna chain two. This will be a corner. All right, yarn over, go in, and we're gonna do three double crochets back into that stitch again, just like we did the first one. Yarn over, go back in, pull up a loop, bloopity bloop, and bloopity bloop. That's technical, right? Bloopity bloop? Yeah, I thought it might be. Okay. Yarn over. Let's do one more. Okay. There, we have another cluster of three. Let's make another corner. One, two. There's our corner. Let's pull out some more yarn so that we don't knock this little yarn ball onto the floor. Okay. Now, Let's do another, you guessed it, cluster of three double crochets. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, pull through, yarn over, in, pull up a loop. Goodness, I'm so awkward today and every day of my life. You ever try to do something for somebody that you absolutely know how to do and you can almost do with your eyes closed, but you try to show somebody else and it looks like you've never done it before in your life? Yeah, that's me on a daily, okay? So look at that. We have three sides now. <laughs> and with this, don't do what I tried to do last night. I was making a square and I wasn't paying attention. I just kind of kept doing my thing and I ended up with like six sides. Yeah, frog time. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's make another corner. That's just two single crochets. Let's do three more doubles into that gap. Oh, 
one and a two and a three maybe yeah we'll get there eventually all right let's snug this down a little bit and I just sort of put pull the bottom string there through my fingers and bloop it pretty much closes it up but we still have our corner to make here easy peasy just two more singles then we have to join the way I join these I go to the third chain that we started with remember the first chain when we chained four one two three let's put our hook in there and in there and we are just slip stitching which is just yarn over pull through actually pull through hello yarn cooperate please we're making a video here see that's what I mean you think I never slip stitched before in my life and then continue to pull through the other loop there's your little inner part of the square now you want to yarn over pull through like you're making a stitch find your scissors and cut that sucker off okay pull it up and just grab this with your fingers and snug it down a little bit because you don't want it to come out we're done with this okay now we're going to do the outside remember we have an inside and an outside on this and mine are 99.99 percent of the time two different colors just because of the way my temperature blanket works pull out some yarn do a slip knot get this sucker on your hook now for these I'm using a four weight yarn to demonstrate my temperature blanket if you've seen it is done in DK three weight um, with a little bit smaller hook but that's okay now the way I always start mine and there's no particular reason for this just because I like to I put that corner that I just tied off down here to my bottle but I kind of go caddy corner to it okay and I'm always working on the front side let's snug that sucker down again okay yeah to join to start this again you want to come in from the front into that corner space pull up your yarn to pull up a loop and slip stitch and then snug that down from your tail side there there you go chain three that is the first part that is a double crochet okay that was taking the place of a double crochet technically it's not a double crochet we know that because we just chained three all right now we have to do a triple crochet because we are making these corners actual corners see that triple crochet you're yarning over twice go back into that corner space pull up pull through the first two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two okay then you're just going to do another double crochet on the other side of it yarn over just like normal easy peasy lemon squeezy no froggy all that stuff okay now to do the rest of this we need to do just double crochet into each one of these you're going to have basically your corner stitches which is double triple double you're going to have double crochets across here double 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 and then another corner setup that's how we're going to do all the way around on this so we're going to yarn over and don't miss this one here if you kind of pull a little bit you can see this stitch right there if you look at the post of your double crochet the part right there and pretend this is making a letter this is making the letter P see with the loop on the outside you're going in to the top of the P on that first stitch your first stitch is not over here I used to make that mistake and I would miss stitches and it would just drive me bonkers because I didn't know what I did wrong anyway yarn over go into the top of that first stitch pull up your loop finish your double crochet we're going to yarn over and just go into the next one okay and once again into that last one there all right now it looks like we have a stitch there doesn't it but we really don't because this stitch here that is the top of this one now we're going to do our corner we're going to yarn over go into that corner space pull up a loop 
work our double crochet. Now it's time for a triple. Remember, double, triple, double. Yarn over twice. Go into the space and work your triple. If I can make it not split while I'm standing up around a tripod, <laughs> you can only see me, right? Yarn over, go into that space, pull up. There you go. You've done one whole side and around the corner. We have our next three to do there. Yarn over, go into the top of that P of that stitch. And I know I hold my yarn weird. We all do stuff weird, you know, in our own way. People that do it like this with the yarn out in the fingers, it actually causes me a lot of pain. So I don't. All right, back in the corner. See, I told you, easy peasy. Yarn over, we're gonna do a single, uh, excuse me, a double, triple, double. So double, yarn over twice for triple. Don't be like me, don't forget to yarn over twice and have to frog stuff, because yes, I have. And you see that knot coming up. Hmm. Oh no, danger. It's not that big a danger, okay? That is the top of what is essentially that stitch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna do a double into it. We can't really find the top of the P there, but if you go to right to where that's snug down, you can sneak your hook right in that gap. Pull it through and finish your double. And you'll notice I do not crochet my ends in as I go. That's just a personal preference. I don't like crocheting over the ends. It tends to get wonky for me personally. It may work great for you, then you do that. As the, the kids used to say, you do you, boo. I don't know if they still say that. They probably don't. I'm, you know, I'm way above a certain age. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're in the home stretch or the last lap or however that works. We're going to make our corner again. Do the triple. Don't forget to yarn over twice. I don't know why I'm singing it. Okay, and another double. And back to our three doubles there to finish off that run. One thing I really love about these little squares is just that they're little squares. Even a day when I'm having a really bad day, I don't feel like crocheting, I don't feel like doing diddly. I make sure my temperature blanket gets done every day because it forces me to do it. Because, oh, I can oh I can do five minutes, you know, or something. So there we go. There's a little gap there, but that's okay. We need to go to the third of that first chain because we're connecting this now. And, okay. I always leave myself, okay, not always. I now leave myself longer pieces to weave in. And there's a reason for that. I used to leave them very short. I used to try to conserve. Ooh, sorry, bumping the tripod and knocking the world askew. I would try to conserve yarn and then I realized I wasn't doing a very good job of weaving in. All right, we're gonna flip it over to the back side. Bloop, on the back side. Get your handy dandy yarn needle. And thread her through. Now I'm sitting and I'm attempting to see what's going on on the camera, that's not so easy. I just go around Just try to keep this sucker snug, especially for the circle part. If you have another way that you do this that works for you, great. 
I am not saying that my way is the be-all, end-all of anything. It's just the way I do it. And I may change the way I do things. If I find something that works better for me, you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to change it. And then I try to go backwards at least a little bit. The whole thing of weaving in this stuff is to make sure it doesn't come undone. If it goes to the wash or something like that. Okay. Oopsie. All right. Drop that. And I'll pull and snip. Toss that to the side. You know, I, I even saved these. Yeah, I have them going in, in a bag. Actually, several bags now to use as stuffing for my kamigurumis and stuff. I know, right? Can't not. All right, then I do my other brown one just because that's the order I like to do it in. Oh, let's split the yarn. All right. All right, I'm going to fold it. I'm going to show it who's boss today. Ta-da. Wahaha, I made it work. And for this, I like to go under. But again, I'm working on the back side. So as long as I don't go over to the front side, pretty much anything I do is going to be cool over here. And I try to straighten as I go. Like if I've pulled too tight and made it all wonky, I unwonky it, you know, as one does. And I have gone through not only loops, but I've gone through fibers as well in there. So let's, uh, bloop. Now to do the pink ones. I pretty much do the same thing with this one here. Just feed it through, try to get it into a fiber or two in there as well. This side doesn't have any woven in, so we'll, we'll come over here just to even it out. Does it really matter? Probably not. It's just something I do to keep myself amused. Look at the thermometer outside. It's early in the day and it is already over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, obviously. If it were 80 degrees Celsius, we would not be having this conversation. Okay, snip that one off. And this last one, the only thing you have to be careful with is that you don't pull it down too aggressively and make that fold over. Because it is coming from the outside edge. So. I did it again. Oops, I did it again. I split out this yarn. I thought it was my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know, really, really bad imitation. Okay. Let's go down through that and make our way back to this little runway of weaving in things here. See what I mean by, yeah, you don't wanna do that. Pull this sucker back out a little bit. Just be mindful of that particular one so that you don't end up with a really super wonky edge. I don't know why I'm being so particular about weaving in these ends. This is a sample. This is not going in my blanket. My blanket's colors are blues. All right. Now, for the join, for the join indeed. All right, flip our front sides over. Oh, look, we have two different squares. Yes, Oscar, I'm not talking to you. You probably heard my cat. I'm taking my, my join color. In this case, it's going to be this mustard yellow color, just because. I like my join to show on my temperature blanket. My joins are in white and they show. So the, what I do is I put my back sides together, do the bump. Sorry, that's a 70s dance. All right, Oscar. 
you have crunchies. I hear your fountain running. You're good. And I don't know why I just did that. Good gravy. He just distracted me. I was going to thread that and do some sewing. We're not doing any sewing here. We're also apparently not doing a slip knot. Good gravy. I have lost my coordination today because I'm trying to sit. I should stand. I can see things a little bit better that way. Okay, there we go. Now, with your back sides together so that your front sides are showing out, go to your corner of whatever's on top. Get in there and go to the corner of the one below. If it is not exact, it is okay. You will make up for it when you crochet stuff together, okay? You're gonna slip stitch those together at first, snug up that tail and chain one, okay? The rest of it is simple single crochet for real. I go into that stitch there, try to match it up with that stitch there, pull through, boom. Next, this one. And if I notice the stitch is getting way far off, I might put two on one side and only one on the other to make them even. But you just have to, you're eyeballing it. This is not an exact science. In there, in there, pull through, bloop. A lot of blooping. And I see that? I have, looks like I have an extra stitch over here. That's okay. Watch this. We're going to go into this one. And to make it more even, because look, we ran out of stitches over there, we're going to go back into this same one on this pink one to even it out. It happens. Yeah, all the squares have the same number of stitches, but they don't always match up nicely, you know? Let's get in our corner there. And that's it. You cut off. Snug down. Open that up. And look, you have a join that will show up on the front. And on these, you just weave these in back and forth on the back like that. So that the back, your back part has all the backward stitches and everything, but on the front, you've got a cool pattern. These colors don't go together, but that was just more for demonstration purposes. So that is how I make the squares and join the squares for my temperature blanket. I will post a, put a picture at the end of the video so that you can see how mine is looking with all my blues and no more pinks for you pink folks, that people that hate pink. It's okay. The pink will be going away soon. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this little, you know, how do I do it kind of deal. A um, little crochet from the beginning action because I am a beginner. And this is just how we all learn. We show each other and we share and we try stuff and we frog stuff. Because, yeah, rip it, rip it, rip it. <laughs> Thank you again for coming by. I appreciate you for being here. I would love it if you looked at more of my tutorials, if that's what you're into. There's a lot of other content on my channel as well because it is crochet life and stuff. And believe me, there's a lot of life and stuff rolling around on this channel. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.